The Adventures of Pinocchio Chapter 29 Pinocchio returns to the fairy's house, and she promises him that, on the morrow, he will cease to be a marionette and become a boy. A wonderful party of coffee and milk to celebrate the great event. Mindful of what the fisherman had said, Pinocchio knew that all hope of being saved had gone. He closed his eyes and waited for the final moment. Suddenly, a large dog, attracted by the odor of boiling oil, came running into the cave. Get out, cried the fisherman threateningly, and still holding on to the marionette, who was all covered with flour. But the poor dog was very hungry, and whining and wagging his tail. He tried to say, Give me a bite of the fish, and I'll go in peace. Get out, I say, repeated the fisherman and he drew back his foot to give the dog a kick. Then the dog, who, being really hungry, would take no refusal, turned in a rage toward the fisherman and bared his terrible fangs. At that moment, a pitiful little voice was heard saying, Save me, Alidoro! If you don't, I'll fry! The dog immediately recognized Pinocchio's voice. Great was his surprise to find that the voice came from the little flower-covered bundle that the fisherman held in his hand. Then what did he do? With one great leap, he grasped that bundle in his mouth, and holding it lightly between his teeth, ran through the door and disappeared like a flash. The fisherman, angry at seeing his meal snatched from under his nose, ran after the dog, but a bad fit of coughing made him stop and turn back. Meanwhile, Alidoro, as soon as he had found the road which led to the village, stopped and dropped Pinocchio softly to the ground. How much I do thank you! said the marionette. It's not necessary, answered the dog. You saved me once, and what is given is always returned. We are in this world to help one another. But how did you get in that cave? I was lying here on the sand, more dead than alive, when an appetizing odor of fried fish came to me. That odor tickled my hunger, and I followed it. Oh, if I had come a moment later! Don't speak about it, wailed Pinocchio, still trembling with fright. Don't say a word. If you had come a moment later, I would be fried, eaten, and digested by this time. Brr! I shiver at the mere thought of it. Alidoro laughingly held out his paw to the marionette, who shook it heartily, feeling that now he and the dog were good friends. Then they bid each other goodbye, and the dog went home. Pinocchio, left alone, walked toward a little hut nearby where an old man sat at the door sunning himself and asked, Tell me, good man, have you heard anything of a poor boy with a wounded head whose name was Eugene? The boy was brought to this hut, and now... Now he's dead? Pinocchio interrupted sorrowfully. No, he is now alive, and he has already returned home. Really? Really? cried the marionette, jumping around with joy. Then the wound was not serious? But it might have been even mortal, answered the old man for a heavy book was thrown at his head. And who threw it? A schoolmate of his, a certain Pinocchio. And who is this Pinocchio? asked the marionette, feigning ignorance. They say he is a mischief-maker, a tramp, a street urchin. Columnies, all columnies. Do you know this Pinocchio? By sight, answered the marionette. And what do you think of him? answered the old man. I think he is a very good boy, fond of study, obedient, kind to his father, and to his whole family. As he was telling all these enormous lies about himself, Pinocchio touched his nose and found it twice as long as it should be. Scared out of his wits, he cried out, Don't listen to me, good man. All the wonderful things I have said are not true at all. I know Pinocchio well, and he is indeed a very wicked fellow, lazy and disobedient, who, instead of going to school, runs away with his playmates to have a good time. At this speech, his nose returned to its natural size. Why are you so pale? asked the old man suddenly. Let me tell you. Without knowing it, I've rubbed myself against a newly painted wall. He lied, ashamed to say that he had been made ready for the frying pan. What have you done with your coat and your hat and your breeches? I met thieves, and they robbed me. Tell me, my good man, have you not, perhaps, a little suit to give me, so that I may go home? My boy, as for clothes, I have only a bag in which I keep hops. If you want it, take it. There it is. Pinocchio did not wait for him to repeat his words. He took the bag, which happened to be empty, and after cutting a big hole at the top and two at the sides, he slipped into it as if it were a shirt. 
lightly clad as he was, he started out toward the village. Along the way he felt very uneasy. In fact, he was so unhappy that he went along, taking two steps forward and one back. And as he went, he said to himself, How shall I ever face my good little fairy? What will she say when she sees me? Will she forgive this last trick of mine? Well, I am sure she won't. Oh, no, she won't. And I deserve it as usual, for I am a rascal, fine on promises which I never keep. He came to the village late at night. It was so dark he could see nothing, and it was raining pitchforks. Pinocchio went straight to the fairy's house, firmly resolved to knock at the door. When he found himself there, he lost courage and ran back a few steps. A second time he came to the door, and again he ran back. A third time he repeated his performance. The fourth time, before he had time to lose his courage, he grasped the knocker and made a faint sound with it. He waited and waited and waited. Finally, after a full half hour, a top floor window, the house had four stories, opened and Pinocchio saw a large snail look out. A tiny light glowed on top of her head. Who knocks at this late hour? she called. Is the fairy home? asked the marionette. The fairy is asleep and does not wish to be disturbed. Who are you? It is I. Who's I? Pinocchio. Who is Pinocchio? The marionette, the one who lives in the fairy's house. Oh, I understand, said the snail. Wait for me there. I will come down to open the door for you. Hurry, I beg of you, for I am dying of cold. My boy, I am a snail, and snails are never in a hurry. An hour passed. Two hours. The door was still closed. Pinocchio, who was trembling with fear and shivering from the cold rain on his back, knocked a second time, this time louder than before. At that second knock, a window on the third floor opened, and the same snail looked out. "'Dear little snail,' cried Pinocchio from the street, "'I have been waiting two hours for you, and two hours on a dreadful night like this are as long as two years. Hurry, please!' "'My boy,' answered the snail in a calm, peaceful voice, "'my dear boy, I am a snail, and snails are never in a hurry.' And the window closed. A few minutes later, midnight struck. Then one o'clock, two o'clock, and the door still remained closed. Then Pinocchio, losing all patience, grabbed the knocker with both hands, fully determined to wake the whole house in the street with it. As soon as he touched the knocker, however, it became an eel and wiggled away into the darkness. Really, cried Pinocchio, blind with rage, if the knocker is gone, I can still use my feet. He stepped back and gave the door a most solemn kick. He kicked so hard that his foot went straight through the door and his leg followed almost to the knee. No matter how he pulled and tugged, he could not pull it out. There he stayed as if nailed to the door. Poor Pinocchio. The rest of the night he had to spend with one foot through the door and the other one in the air. As dawn was breaking, the door finally opened. That brave little animal, the snail, had taken exactly nine hours to go from the fourth floor to the street. How she must have raced! What are you doing with your foot through the door? She asked the marionette, laughing. It was a misfortune. Won't you try, pretty little snail, to free me from this terrible torture? My boy, we need a carpenter here, and I have never been one. Ask the fairy to help me. The fairy is asleep and does not want to be disturbed. But what do you want me to do, nailed to the door like this? Enjoy yourself, counting the ants which are passing by. Bring me something to eat, at least, for I am faint with hunger. Immediately. In fact, after three and a half hours, Pinocchio saw her return with a silver tray on her head. On the tray there were bread, roast chicken, fruit. Here is the breakfast the fairy sends to you, said the snail. At the sight of all these good things, the marionette felt much better. What was his disgust, however, when on tasting the food, he found the bread to be made of chalk, the chicken of cardboard, and the brilliant fruit of colored alabaster. He wanted to cry. He wanted to give himself up to despair. He wanted to throw away the tray and all that was on it. Instead, either from pain or weakness, 
he fell to the floor in a dead faint. When he regained his senses, he found himself stretched out on a sofa, and the fairy was seated near him. This time I forgive you, said the fairy to him, but be careful not to get into mischief again. Pinocchio promised to study and to behave himself, and he kept his word for the remainder of the year. At the end of it, he passed first in all his examinations, and his report was so good that the fairy said to him happily, Tomorrow your wish will come true. And what is that? Tomorrow you will cease to be a marionette and will become a real boy. Pinocchio was beside himself with joy. All his friends and schoolmates must be invited to celebrate the great event. The fairy promised to prepare two hundred cups of coffee and milk and four hundred slices of toast buttered on both sides. The day promised to be a very gay and happy one, but... Unluckily, in a marionette's life, there's always a but, which is apt to spoil everything. End of chapter 29 Chapter 30 Pinocchio, instead of becoming a boy, runs away to the land of toys with his friend Lampwick. Coming out at last from the surprise into which the fairy's words had thrown him, Pinocchio asked for permission to give out the invitations. Well, indeed, you may invite your friends to tomorrow's party. Only remember to return home before dark, do you understand? Oh, I'll be back in one hour without fail, answered the marionette. Well, take care, Pinocchio. Boys give promises very easily, but they as easily forget them. But I am not like those others. When I give my word, I keep it. Well, we shall see. In case you do disobey, you will be the one to suffer, not anyone else. Why? Because boys who do not listen to their elders always come to grief. Well, I certainly have, said Pinocchio, but from now on, I obey. Well, we shall see if you were telling the truth. And without adding another word, Pinocchio bade the good fairy goodbye, and, singing and dancing, he left the house. In a little more than an hour, all his friends were invited. Some accepted quickly and gladly. Others had to be coaxed, but when they heard that the toast was to be buttered on both sides, they all ended by accepting the invitation with the words, Oh, we'll come to please you. Now, it must be known that, among all his friends, Pinocchio had one whom he loved most of all. The boy's real name was Romeo, but everyone called him Lampwick because he was tall and thin and had a woebegone look about him. Lampwick was the laziest boy in the school and the biggest mischief maker, but Pinocchio loved him dearly. That day, he went straight to his friend's house to invite him to the party, but Lampwick was not at home. He went a second time, and again a third, but still without success. Or where could he be? Pinocchio searched here and there and everywhere and finally discovered him hiding under a farmer's wagon. Oh, what are you doing there? asked Pinocchio, running up to him. Oh, I'm waiting for midnight to strike to go. Where? Far, far away. And I have gone to your house three times to look for you. Or what did you want from me? Haven't you heard the news? Don't you know what good luck is mine? Or what is it? Tomorrow I end my days as a marionette and become a boy, like you, 
than all my other friends. Well, may it bring you luck. Well, shall I see you at my party tomorrow? But I'm telling you that I go tonight. Well, what time? At midnight. Where are you going? To a real country, the best in the world, a wonderful place. What's it called? It's called the Land of Toys. Why don't you come too? I? Oh, no. Well, you're making a big mistake, Pinocchio. Believe me. If you don't come, you'll be sorry. Now, where can you find a place that will agree better with you and me? No schools. No teachers. No books. In that blessed place, there is no such thing as study. Here, it is only on Saturdays that we have no school. In the land of toys. Every day, except Sunday, is a Saturday. Vacation begins on the 1st of January and ends on the last day of December. Now that's the place for me. All countries should be like it. How happy we should all be. But how does one spend the day in the land of toys, asked Pinocchio. Days are spent in play and enjoyment from morn till night. At night one goes to bed, and the next morning the good times begin all over again. What do you think of it? Hmm, said Pinocchio, nodding his wooden head as if to say, Well, it's the kind of life that would agree with me perfectly. Well, you want to go with me then? Yes or no? You have to make up your mind. Uh, no, no. Then again, no. I, I promised my fairy to become a good boy, and I want to keep my word. You see, the sun is setting, and I must leave you and run. Goodbye. Good luck to you. Where are you going in such a hurry? Home. My good fairy wants me to return home before night. Wait two minutes more. It's too late. Only two minutes. And if the fairy scolds me... Let her scold. After she gets tired, she'll stop, said Lampwick. Are you going alone or with others? Alone? There will be more than a hundred of us. Will you walk? At midnight the wagon passes here that is to take us within the boundaries of that marvelous country. Oh, how I wish midnight would strike. Why? To see you all set out together. We'll stay here a while longer and you will see us. No, no, I want to return home. Wait two more minutes. I've waited too long as it is. The fairy will be worried. No, oh, poor fairy. Is she afraid the bats will eat you up? Listen, Lampwick, said Pinocchio. Are you really sure there are no schools in the land of toys? Not even the shadow of one. Not even one teacher. Not one. And one does not have to study. Never. 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 What a great land, said Pinocchio, feeling his mouth water. What a beautiful land. I've never been there, but I can well imagine it. Well, why don't you come, too? Well, it's useless for you to tempt me. I told you, I promised my good fairy to behave myself, and I'm going to keep my word. Well, goodbye, then. And remember me. To the grammar schools, to the high schools, and even to the colleges, if you meet them on the way. Well, goodbye, Lampwick, and have a pleasant trip, and enjoy yourself, and remember your friends once in a while. And with these words, Pinocchio started on his way home, turning once more to his friend, and asked him, Are you sure that in that country each week is composed of six Saturdays and one Sunday? Very sure. And that Vacation begins on the 1st of January and ends on the 31st of December? Very, very sure. 
What a great country! repeated Pinocchio, puzzled as what to do. And then, in sudden determination, he said hurriedly, Goodbye for the last time and good luck. Goodbye. How soon will you go? Within two hours. Uh, what a pity. If there were only one hour, I, I might wait for you. And the ferry? Oh, by this time, well, in one hour or more or less makes, makes very little difference. I'm late, you know. Oh, poor Pinocchio, if the fairy scolds you. No, well, let her scold. After she gets tired, she'll stop. In the meantime, the night became darker and darker. And all at once, in the distance, a small light flickered. A queer sound could be heard, soft as a little bell and faint and muffled like the buzz of a faraway mosquito. There it is, cried Lampwick, jumping to his feet. What? whispered Pinocchio. The wagon which is coming to get me. For the last time, are you coming or not? But is it really true that in that country boys never have to study? Never, never, never. Oh, what a wonderful, beautiful, marvelous country. Oh! That is the end of chapter 30.